This is our first video on geometric optics and geometric optics or ray optics is a model of optics that describes light uh, propagation in terms of rays. There are two kinds of images um, that we will look at uh, when we construct the, um, the rays or use the ray diagrams to get the image of the um, reflection or um, where the uh, the rays meet on the other side of the lenses. So there will be two uh, types of the images, real or virtual. And in real images, um, the light rays follow the rays and actually meet and um, at the focal point or go through the focal point um, at the image position. So they form the image on the other side. You can project the, um, the real images on the projector screen and the real image may be made visible like on the screen or a sheet of paper and um, virtual images cannot be so the virtual images cannot be projected on the screen and the rays actually don't meet where they appear to be and so in the regular mirror, like the mirror that you usually look in the morning before you leave home, um, in that, I hope you do, in that mirror, you can see an image of yourself. And that image is um, the virtual image because what you see, like in this picture that you see right here, what you see is the person standing behind that mirror at the distance um, as far as you are from that mirror. So there is nobody standing behind that mirror, but it appears that there is a person behind that mirror and you're looking at yourself where it appears to be you. And so that one is called a virtual image because if you place a screen behind the mirror, there will be nothing appearing on the other side of the mirror. Also, not always the images that appear are the same size as an object itself. So there is a formula for calculating the uh, magnification of the, uh, of the image. And it is equal to, here in the formula you see hi, that is the height of an image over the height of an O, h of sub O. Uh, so that is an object and it also equals to the negative distance to the image and distance to the object. So in the picture right here, you see distance to the object and this is distance to the image where it appears. And also when you look at, um, so here is your eye and here is the object. So the rays from the object will reflect in all the directions, but some of these rays will hit the, um, the mirror at certain angles. And there is such law as um, the ray reflection law that states that the angle of reflection equals to the angle of incidence. So if the wave or light is coming, the ray is coming at certain angles. So this angle is called again, incident angle. And this one is reflected angle. So the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. So when you look at the mirror and you have an object standing, so the rays that hit the mirror um, at certain angle will reflect some of them, not all of them, we just look at the ones that reflect back into your eye, will reflect into your eye. And what your brain is going to make out of it is this. So this is the bottom of the image. So your brain will tell you that the bottle that you're looking at is actually standing there. And this is the top of the image. So your brain is going to tell you that the bottle is the top of the bottle is over there. So there will be an image drawn in your brain telling you that there is a bottle behind the mirror where there is no image behind the mirror, the virtual image. So here you have the negative, the distance um, 
uh, di over do so that is the distance of an image over the distance of an object and those distances away from the mirror and in most cases the height of an image um, differs from the height of an object and that means that the mirror um, does some magnification or reduction so if you have um, the magnification would be so if the image is greater then you will have hi over ho to be a number greater than one and if it is a reduction then it's going to be less than one and if the magnification is positive then the image is upright compared to the object so if the object is upright and the image is upright then the magnification is positive positive. and if the magnification is negative then the image is inverted or it's um, upside down compared to the object when you're looking for the image um, you will have to use so again um, like an object right here in green color so i have an object or blue color whichever that is so i have an object green if i look at an object um the light that is reaching the object goes in all different directions but i'm only looking at certain um and i'm going to look at these specific three rays um that will form the image for the observer so if the observer's eye is let's say over here if I have an observer's eye right there, then uh, when the observer is looking at the um, at the object, it forms an image for that um, observer. So here is going to be maybe I'll do it green as well. So here is going to be the image. So in order to for me to construct this image, I have to use these specific three rays and they have names these three rays so the first one is a ray parallel to the pr principal axis so the principal axis is the axis like the x-axis um, or optic axis and it will seem to pass through the uh, focal point on the other side so it goes parallel to the axis and then passes through the focal point on the other side for the lens so i always look at this if your ray hits first the curvature of the lens then i choose the focal point of that curvature so my principal ray is gonna go straight hits this curvature i find the focal point of that curvature and i place the ray through it then the second ray is the ray passing through the center of the lens and it's called the central ray the red one and um, it will end up on the other side and it doesn't refract it goes straight um, through the center without um, without any change of an angle so it just goes always straight so the central angle uh, central ray always goes straight and the last one is the ray that seems to pass through the focal point first and then parallel to the principal axis so through the focal point the other focal point of the other side of the lens so there is the other side of the lens so it goes through the focal point and then parallel so the three specific rays you always have to think about them so it goes parallel to the axis, through the focal point, through the center, through the focal point, parallel to the axis. And they are the same rays, almost the same, for mirrors and lenses. Uh, the only difference is lenses rays pass through and um, meet on the other side. So they form the real images most of the time, except for certain cases. And the real images most of the time will be upside down or inverted. So the lenses are found in huge areas of optical instruments, ranging from uh, simple magnifying glasses uh, to eye and camera zoom lenses. And um, the word lens derives from a Latin word for 
lentil uh, bean that shape reminds us of the shape of a bean and um, the thin lenses is uh, defined by or thin lens is defined by um, the thickness that allows the rays to refract but does not allow properties such as uh, dispersion or aberration and aberration of light is a phenomenon in which the star of um, or other celestial bodies in um, astron astronomical uh, distances uh, viewed from the earth and appear to be slightly displaced from the true position so that's called aberration so when we look at the lenses we will look at the convergent or convex lenses um, and here you see the picture converging and divergent lenses so converging lenses are convex lenses and divergent lenses are concave lenses they look like a cave and uh, the lens in which light rays that enters um, it parallel to the axis crosses uh, to the other side of the lens and converging um, through the focal point is called converging lens and the divergent lenses that causes the light rays to bend away from its axis as um, it and that's why it's called di uh, divergent lenses and also the focal point so here you see the pictures of convergent and divergent lenses and i also found for you an image where um, the eyesight is um, by nature probably damaged um, or was not designed correctly so what you do you use the lens in front of the eye and that eye refocuses the image and places it in the exact position where um, your sensors would see the image in the right uh, way um, i have a lot of videos for you in our um, in our lectures like the uh, conceptual videos so i hope you watch those before you watch my videos so the focal point the focal point um, is where the light rays cross and um, it's called the focal length or focal point of the lens and the focal length uh, is a little bit different it's the distance between the center of the lens and to its focal point um, so that's called the focal length and again if the image is um, in the if the image and object are on the same side of the lens because your lens um, can pass the light through it so the image should appear on the other side of the lens so the real image should appear on the other side of the lens but if for some reason an image and the object uh, on the same side of the lens the image distance is negative because there shouldn't be any image where the object is the image should appear on the other side of the lens and the image is called virtual in the real images um, so real images are usually inverted and for convergent mirrors the focal length is positive um, and similarly a convergent lens always has a positive focal point and the divergent lenses always has a negative point because the focal point is on the same side of an object for divergent lenses but we're going to look at this and um, talk about it more as we learn so we will look at different cases um, where depending where you place an object compared to the focal point so if you have a focal point here um, then you could place the focal uh, the object behind the focal point in front of focal point and between the focal point and the lens and so on so there are different cases where you're going to place um, the object to get uh, real or uh, imaginary virtual images so in this case you see the real image this is where the rays meet and the image is on the other side of the lens in this case you see the virtual image because the image appears on the same side where the object is and that should not happen and again for divergent lenses or concave lenses um, the uh, 
the image always going to be virtual and always will appear on the same side where the object is. So here are the cases and you kind of have to remember them or otherwise you would just have to draw and figure it out on your own. Um, so if you have an object placed far, far away in the infinity, its image will appear where the focal point is. So it will be just the dot at the focal point. If your, um, if your object is placed past the twice the focal length and twice the focal length is the radius of curvature of the lens so this curvature will have the radius and that radius is twice the focal length so if this is the focal length between the center and uh, the focal point then twice that distance is going to be the radius of that curvature so if you place an object farther away from um, or past the twice the distance of the focal uh, length, then following the um, the ray diagram that we talked about just a few seconds ago, or minutes ago, so we have parallel through the focal point at which it hits, so it hits this side first, so I have to use the focal point of that side, and so parallel then through the focal point through the center and then you want to do through the focal point you always want to do three rays um, to the center line and then parallel because if you do three rays you always can check whether your image is correct or not and with two it's difficult because they always meet at two point at one point to lay uh, two rays but you want to do three if it meets in the same position where the other two then you did the graph correctly so in this case, you see the image is where the rays meet. The image is uh, reflected or upside down or inverted. And the image is real. And also for the focal point, you're going to use positive focal point because you're using that distance where the focal point actually exists. Then you, your distance to the image is going to be positive. Your distance to the object, it's always positive. So image distance, object distance. Um, then the next case is when you place the um, the object right where the twice the distance of the focal point. So if you place an object where the exactly focal point twice the focal point is, then you have parallel through the focal point, and again choose the focal point that is related to the side of the curvature of the lens you hit first through the center and then again you always want to check it with the third ray so it would be through the focal point and then parallel and so if the three of them meet in the same point then you have also for um for ap exam i would suggest to bring you for you to have um the graph paper or have um have the ruler because you need to make sure that the exact points meet when you do these graphs um you again um see that oh in the previous image your um your image was smaller than the object in this case you have an image the same size as an object uh, and it also meets at twice the distance of the focal length. Your focal length is positive, your distance of an image and the object is positive, and the image is real because the rays meet on the other side. Then if you place an object uh, between the focal point and twice the distance of focal point, again, you have parallel through the focal point, through the center, and then you will have, so here is the center line of the, um, lens you would have it through the focal point and then parallel so all three rays have to meet in the same position then you will know you did it exactly right magnification is greater than one so it's it is larger the image is larger the distance the focal point and the um, like all of them are positive and your image is real and inverted for the next one, if you place your object at the focal point, you will get no image because you um, 
you will have two rays that are parallel part coming through and they, they never meet to form an image. If you have, this is the only case and you almost like must know and remember this because it's a very common question on AP exam. If your object is placed between the focal point and the lens, so it's only between, happens when it's between the focal point and the lens, then if you try to um, do the ray diagram, you have parallel through the focal point and then you have um, through the center you also could do through the focal point and then parallel so if this is the center line and you do through the focal point and then parallel you see that all the rays are scattered in different directions so there is no image on the other side However, there will be formed a virtual image. It's not an image that you can project on the screen um, because the rays don't actually meet in this position, but they seem like if there is an image. So this image is virtual. Your focal point in this case is also positive because for converging lenses, the focal point is always positive. However, for divergent lenses, um, the focal point is always going to be negative. And the distance to the image over here is negative because the image is appearing on the same size as the object. So the distance to the image is going to be negative in this case. For concave or divergent lenses, uh, we have an object and the object here is um, I'm gonna make it red it was in black so here is an object and you follow your so I'm gonna say this is di do this is the object and this is di and it's gonna be negative so if I follow the ray diagram at first I have parallel through um, to the center of the lens then it has to go through the focal point of that curvature and do you see the curvature that it hits first is this one and this curvature has the focal point on the same size where the image is, the object is so you have to use this ray diagram so you would have the ray going this way through this focal point and your focal point is going to be negative in this case. So the focal point for divergent lenses is always negative. Then you can go to the focal point on the other side. So you want to aim for that focal point. But as soon as you get to the lens, you have it parallel to the um, axis, principal axis. And then one through the center. So again, you have three rays right here and three rays will all meet in the same point. So you just have to make um, adjustments right here. So you have to make where the rays actually don't meet the uh, dashed lines. And you will find that there is an image right here. So the image is negative. Um, the distance of an image is negative because it is a virtual image and it's on the same side where the object is so this is the object and then uh, the focal point or the focal length is also negative because it is on the same side of an object and for all divergent lenses this is going to be the case so there's not as many cases as there were for um, uh, for the convergent lenses it's just going to be smaller or bigger depending where you place your object um, in this case and just like lenses mirrors can form variety of images for example uh, dental mirror may produce um, the magnified image just like um, makeup mirrors do and security mirrors in the shops um, on the other hand for images that are smaller than the object so for um for focal length it's the half of the radius of the curvature of the mirror and your concave mirrors um have different cases in this case so your um converging or convex lenses have um 
many cases and your concave mirrors have many cases. If you place an object at the infinity, you see that um, the image of the object is going to appear at the focal point in this case. If you place an object at the two times or pass, so the center point is where the radius is. So here is your focal point and twice that distance is the center line or the center point, which is the twice the distance to the focal point. So if you place your image past the center line or twice the distance of the focal point, you follow the same ray diagrams. You have parallel through the focal point through the focal point, then parallel, and through the center line. And, um, and you see where they meet. And this is where your image is going to be appear. And this image is real and it is inverted. You could do one more ray for mirrors, and that would be this ray. You need, however, know exactly the angle because the angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection. So you can do four rays for mirrors, actually, but they usually don't use this one. Um, they use the other three. And so this image is um, inverted and it is real. If you place an object at the twice the distance of the focal point, then again, you follow the ray diagram. You have parallel to the axis um, through the focal point, through the uh, focal point in parallel and here you can use one more the one that is incident in reflected ray um, and you will see that the image in this case is the same size and inverted and real and for the next one we also have um, the object is placed between the focal point and twice the length of the focal point and the center line of the center point the same you have parallel through the um, through the center of the lens um, incident in the reflected ray, the purple one, and then the green one is through the focal point and then parallel. And you get an image again, it is inverted and real. Then if you place an object at the focal point in front of the mirror, then you will get no image because all the rays are gonna be parallel. So this is um, this case. And then for the last one, this is again as before uh, with the um, converging lenses. When you place an object between the focal point and the mirror itself, then you will get an imaginary image. Um, and you see in this case, your image is not inverted, so it is imaginary image. And it will appear that if it is behind the mirror, but there is not nothing behind the mirror, so the rays don't pass the mirror. And um, it's the same, the the same rule. So you see, it's parallel through the focal point. Um, it is through the center line that doesn't change the direction, and then the incident and reflected. And you see that these ones are the ones that are um, continuing, but they actually don't exist, but appears to be, uh, but the image appears to be on the other side. So convex um, mirrors are the ones that always form um, a virtual image. And the focal point uh, length is always positive for concave mirrors, the one that we just did um, before this convex mirror. And the focal point is always negative for a convex mirror. And when the image distance is positive, the image is on the same side of the mirror for mirrors. And uh, if the image distance is negative, the image is behind the mirror, so this is where the virtual image is formed, behind the mirror. So this is where the distance uh, is going to be negative. I don't have time to um, solve any problems in uh, this video with you, so I'm going to do it in the next one. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the Geometric Optics video 2 next one coming, and the links are in the description.